Hey everyone, welcome back. And if it's your first time here, then hi, my name is Becca. I like to do full brand reviews as often as I can so I can give you a really comprehensive look and a sort of deep dive at a brand. It does take me time to test products, to get a really solid understanding of how a brand functions, of the different kinds of products they offer, who they're catering to. So I like to give you not only product reviews, but a sort of brand overview in terms of their aesthetic, their price point, and who I think the brand works best for. So today's brand is Milk Makeup, and I really wanted to get this review out because I know the Sephora Savings event is coming up here in a couple of weeks, and people are preparing their shopping carts, and also Milk Makeup has had quite a revamp in the last year. They've had a lot of new releases that I'm excited to share with you. I am wearing a full face of Milk Makeup, so I'm going to show you application, give you a review of the products, I've tried almost all of the products in the line, so I will give you a review of all of that. So if that sounds good, then I hope you'll subscribe and let's get into it. So let's start with a bit of brand overview. I'm sure you're familiar with Milk Makeup by now. They were founded in 2014. They're kind of an offshoot of Milk Studios, which is, you know, t they film TV, movies, commercials, production, all of that. But um, Milk Makeup certainly has its own distinct identity. And I think in the nine years that Milk Makeup's been around, they've gone through quite an evolution. And I am really happy to see the brand continue to evolve and change. For full disclosure, this video is not sponsored. My brand reviews are never going to be sponsored so that I can be editorially independent. I have worked with Milk Makeup on sponsored content in the past for certain product launches and things like that. But this video, again, is not sponsored and I will give you my full, honest, and transparent thoughts. A lot of the products included in this review have been gifted to me, but I've also spent a lot of my own money on the brand over many, many years. I think one of the ways that Milk Makeup has evolved the most is that it's always been a playful, sort of festive and experimental editorial sort of brand. And they had a much more playful edge, I think, when they first launched. For example, there was a lot of like festival oriented sort of makeup with like their face stamps and different glitters and a lot of color. They also had their Kush line, which still exists, but they were a little bit more explicit about being into like 420 and weed culture. And their branding around their Kush line has also changed, which makes sense because I think our general culture around that has shifted as well. Today, I would say Milk Makeup is a little bit more of a refined version of what it was when it launched. I think it's still very experimental. It encourages play and experimentation, and they're not interested in necessarily like the full beat or full glam kind of makeup. They're interested in the real person, and they're interested in real skin, and you can see that in their marketing and the way that they choose to um, portray themselves. And even though they still encourage experimentation, and play and just getting your hands into the product, I think they're also slightly more sophisticated, more refined than they were when they first launched. So I think there's a lot of appeal there across many generations, but especially millennials, also Gen Z. And I also think there are products here that work for more mature skin, mature people. One thing I feel really strongly about with Milk Makeup as a creator, as a collaborator in the past, and also as just a person in the world, is that their commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion is very visible and it's very real. So on their website, you can take a look at, for example, the racial demographic breakdown of their entire company. And they continue to update that and they have done so over a couple of years. And you can see that they actually, they don't just talk the talk, they walk the walk in their hiring process and having worked with so much of the Milk team behind the scenes, I can attest to that. Their commitment to diversity is not only racial, but they work with people of all different genders. And I think that's really important because beauty can be a very exclusionary space and it is a very woman-centered 
centered space, but they work with everybody across the spectrum. And that is really important to me. And that's something that I see both in their marketing as well as behind the scenes and who they invite to events and who they're in community with and who they're in conversation with. I know those aren't things that like the general public gets to see all the time, but having spent time um, with Milk Makeup and their team, that's something that I always notice when I'm in those spaces. And of course, you can also see those commitments in their shade ranges, in their campaigns and marketing, and I'll get to all of that a little bit more in detail when we get to the products. So let's get into the nitty gritty. I'm going to start with makeup and I'm gonna go category by category, and then we're going to get into skincare. And to be completely honest, I definitely turn to Milk Makeup for makeup more than I do skincare, which makes sense, it's in the name. But they also have some skincare highlights that I'll talk about. So let's start with face. Face has definitely become a category where milk makeup has really shined. And obviously, I think we all know by now how much people love the Milk Makeup Hydro Grip Primer. This is a primer that took me a while to get around to because I didn't think it would work for my skin type. It's a thin, grippy gel, and I always thought in my mind it would be too sticky or too heavy for my combo oily skin type, but that's definitely not the case. It somehow makes the skin look hydrated and plumped up, but it also holds on to makeup because of that grippy texture, and it makes makeup stick to the face all day long. And it's not unpleasantly sticky because it is a thin texture. It's almost like a gel serum. So this is actually a primer that I think does work for all skin types. Now Milk Makeup has expanded their primer range and their sort of like skin prep range. So they have their Hydro Grip line and they have their Pore Eclipse line. So Pore Eclipse is more for your combo oily girls or for those who want more of a matte finish, something that's gonna last all day. This is so unique as a pore smoothing primer because it does not contain any silicones. I did work with them on the launch of this last spring, I think, and I was so shocked and so excited to be able to work on that launch because it is perfect for my skin type, especially going into warmer months. So this doesn't have silicone, it's very thin, it comes out as like a gel cream, it spreads out instantly, and it does blur over the pores. So what I did today was I actually did a sort of a targeted priming where I used pore eclipse down the center of my face, sort of around my T-zone, across my nose, my chin, my forehead a little bit, and then I used Hydro Grip around the high points of my face and the perimeter. And it does make a difference. You can see there's really glow around the perimeter of my face, and the oils in the center of my face are very controlled. And I do have to say, the texture of Pore Eclipse really sets it apart from other blurring primers that can often be a little bit too heavy or greasy, or those silicones can break down over the day and actually cause even more cakiness. That's really not the case with Pore Eclipse. So the two skin prep lines continue with setting and priming sprays. So there's the original Hydro Grip Set and Refresh Spray. This is actually a bi-phase spray. You can't quite see it right now, it's a little bit mixed. There's a bit of oil in it and it's also hydrating. This is really nice for dry skin types or if you wanna add a little bit of glow back to the skin after you've maybe over powdered or just done too much to mattify the skin. I know a lot of people also like this to prime their skin to create a bit of that like grippy texture before you go in with makeup if you don't want the heaviness maybe of a primer. Even though I have oily combo skin, there definitely are times when I want something like this. If I'm in a dry climate, or again, I've overdone it with powder products and I wanna bring that life back into the skin, that's when I turn to this. Their most recent launch is their Pore Eclipse Setting Spray. And let me tell you, this is very unique. It's not only a mattifying setting spray, it does do that very well, but it also blurs the skin. It's the weirdest thing. <laughs> So I used this. The first time I used this, I actually went to Milk Studios. I had a really long day. I think I went to two or three brand events. I got home at midnight and my makeup looked exactly the same, which never happens to me because I'm oily combo. Like my makeup just gets oily. That did not happen that day. This is a very, very long wear setting spray. And it also diffuses over the areas where you have applied it. You really don't need a lot of this. Another way to use this that I learned from 
someone at Milk Makeup is that if you don't want to mattify your whole face, you can actually spray this onto um, like a sponge or a brush and sort of work it into the sponge and lightly tap across the areas where you want to mattify, maybe around the nose, the T-zone, under the eyes, and you can get a more targeted sort of sealing <laughs> quality. So you can lock that in without mattifying the whole face. Or you can do what I did, which is that I took um, the pore eclipse setting spray down the center panel of my face around my t-zone and then I use the hydro grip setting spray around the sides of my face and you can get a really sort of like mixed targeted application that way. I actually do do that with the milk makeup sponge. This is on sale on the website. It's only on their website and I was begging them to bring it back. At first it was a gift with purchase, but it's so cute. It's like a little diamond shape. It's pointed and it's flat on the bottom. And it just really gets into those little like nooks and crannies around the nose and stuff like that. I know it's just a sponge, but it's so soft and I really, really like this sponge. So I don't know how long it's gonna be on the website, but if you're curious, you should get it. One of the other priming products in the Milk Makeup line is the Hydro Grip Eye Primer. So you can use this as an eyeshadow primer, but I actually like this even better as an under eye concealer primer. And I got this tip from Alex, Alex Anel. If you have issues with concealer sort of sinking into fine lines or caking up or looking too dry, give this a shot. I mentioned this in my last year's favorites. It's a very, very thin, gel texture. You only need a little bit to sort of smooth out the under eyes. And there really is something about this that makes the under eye concealer look a little bit smoother and continue looking smooth throughout the day instead of sinking into fine lines. I don't have a ton of very defined lines around my eyes yet. I will someday. So, you know, I can only speak to my eye type but um, I do have, you know, little wrinkles and fine lines, and I do find that this helps with longevity and smoothness throughout the day. Let's get into complexion makeup, and there are two complexion, well, three complexion lines. When it comes to base all over face makeup, there is the Sunshine Skin line as well as the Flex line. So their Sunshine Skin line is more of their light coverage, light tint sort of line. There is the Sunshine Skin Tint, which has broad spectrum SPF 30, and there's also the Sunshine Under Eye Tint plus brighten. I use the shade sand in the skin tint and then I use the shade number three in the eye tint. So the Sunshine Skin products both are refillable, which I think is amazing. They sell the refills separately. It's a really nice feature about the products. Something I don't love about these products is that they, the application or the applicator is a roller ball. So you've got the roller ball here and you push the product up and it sort of squirts up around the roller ball and then you apply it to the skin. Same thing applies with the under eye brightener. The brightener roller ball is at an angle, whereas the skin tint is not, but same thing, you kind of push the product up and then you apply around the eyes. I do think it's a sort of fun and different applicator. It does catch the eye. It's not my favorite because I do feel like you know, when the roller ball, when you're done using it, the roller ball and whatever product is left on it can get a little bit cakey or like dry or gunky. And so the next time you use it, um, you're kind of applying what's left or dried on the roller ball surface to your skin. So I like to be sure to wipe it off after I'm done using it just for hygiene purposes. I mean, it is formulated um, with the packaging in mind, so I don't think it's technically unhygienic. It's just not my preference. And it also gives you kind of like a streaky application. So you kind of like dot things around your face and then you blend it out with a tool. So they're not my favorite applicators, but I do really, really like the product. The Sunshine Skin Tint actually really surprised me because I thought it would be too radiant and too dewy for my skin for a long time. And when I finally tried it, I think they actually reformulated it maybe a year or two ago. I tried it then and it really did surprise me because it has a little bit more than light coverage, I would say. It's like a light medium. 
It's not gonna be super buildable. That's not what you use this for, but I really like the addition of the SPF. I really like the way it blends out on the skin. It gives you a really nice diffused look across the skin while still maintaining some luminosity and just that real skin feel and look. The under eye brightener is really, really nice. It is a very thin formula. These are both thin formulas. So you're able to kind of stretch them across the skin and across the under eye in a really nice way. It's not as heavy as a traditional concealer. So you, it's more of like a skin tint for the under eye, like a, an under eye concealer tint, if that makes sense. They're really great for low makeup or low coverage or more natural days. And they do both blend out well with fingers or a brush. Um, I probably wouldn't use a sponge for these personally just because it's more of a serum consistency. But um, again, really easy to slap on and just like spread out with fingers. The other complexion line includes two products that I actually don't have with me because I did declutter them. And I did enjoy them, but they're not, you know, particular standouts in my collection. So the first is the Flex Foundation Stick, and this is a stick foundation, and it's a medium coverage. For a stick foundation, I actually do like this. I like to either sweep a brush across and then apply to the skin, or target apply and then blend out with fingers or a brush. Stick foundations generally are not my favorite type of formula, but for a stick foundation, this doesn't look heavy, it doesn't look waxy or cakey on the skin. Um, I did find it to be slightly, ever so slightly stiff, so you do have to warm it up on the skin as you do with a lot of stick foundations in order to get the most um, skin-like coverage. And I do think application works best um, when you are able to warm up the product and sort of work it into the skin. And I do like using my fingers for a formula like that. That said, it's not my favorite delivery method just because I find that it takes a little bit more work to get it to look as skin-like as a liquid foundation, for example. Their other product is the Flex Concealer, which is a medium to full coverage concealer. And I did find it very full coverage. I found it a little bit drying for my under eyes. I did think it worked well for spot concealing because it has that higher coverage, but it's not my preference for around the under eyes. If you want something dewier and creamier, I would go for either the Sunshine Skin Tint or the next product that I'm going to talk about. By the way, the Sunshine Skin Tint comes in 14 shades, it's $42, and the cartridge is $32. Then their latest complexion release, um, they came out with at the end of last year, and it's their Future Fluid All Over Concealer. I have a feeling this may replace their Flex line because this is a natural finish but medium to full coverage concealer. And it's described as an all over concealer. Any concealer, I've mentioned this, can be an all over concealer, but I do agree that the texture and the finish works well for the under eyes as well as around the face. It comes in this really cute chubby doe foot applicator. I've reviewed this on my channel before. It's a slightly thicker, creamier texture Texture. So whereas the Sunshine Skin Tint is more serum -y, this has a little bit more body and you're able to blend it out around the under eyes or build up coverage around the skin in a really easy way. I use the shade 9N. This is pretty much my year round shade and it works really nicely with a sponge, with a brush or with fingers. And it does look really nice all over the skin too. So what I did today was I did the Sunshine Skin Tint because I was applying all of the products. I primed, I did the sunshine skin tint, I did the sunshine under eye concealer, and then I added coverage where I needed with the future fluid. And I think you can see that it looks like I'm wearing an even application of foundation, even though I sort of mixed and matched and target applied the skin tint with the future fluid. They all play really nicely together. It's also a really nice long wearing concealer. It comes in 30 shades and the shade range is really impressive. There are also cool tones, neutral tones, warm tones, and olive undertones in this range. And I think this shade range, actually this release, really did mark um, a moment for Milk Makeup around being very conscientious of providing shades from very light to very deep. And I've seen that as a continuing theme in their other releases since then that I'll talk about. 
I think that's it for complexion and base makeup. They do have um, a facial oil that comes in the same applicator as the Sunshine Skin Tint. I haven't used it just because I don't use facial oils a ton, but I hear good things about it. And I know it's also in their sort of priming section. So if you are someone with dry skin and you like that sort of application method, I think it's worth checking out. Now I'm gonna move into cheek products. And this is also a huge category for milk makeup. So Milk Makeup's cheek products are generally divided into two lines. So there's their Bionic line, which is liquid gel formulas, and then they have their stick contours, bronzers, blushes, and highlighters. So I'm gonna start with the Bionic line because it's a little bit smaller, and I also think it's very, very underrated. So these came out, I think, last year or at the end of the previous year, and there's a highlighter that comes in two shades, a bronzer that comes in four shades, and a blush that comes in four shades as well. These are a gel formula that is super sheer and works almost as a general skin tint across the complexion. It's not the kind of product that's going to add a lot of pigment or it's not going to build up to a full coverage. It's more of a sort of natural flush, a natural glow, a natural lit from within kind of look. I really, really love these because they are so natural on the skin and they're almost undetectable, but I do think the application method matters. So what I like to do is I use the um, Bionic Glow in the shade Virtual. It's a beautiful rose rose gold sheen. I use it almost as I would use like the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter or something like that. With all of these, I'd like to squeeze out a little bit on the back of my hand and spread it out and then either pick it up with a brush or tap with fingers across the skin. The beautiful thing about these formulas is that they do set down. So once you apply this beautiful sheer flush of color across the skin, it sets down. It's not going to be sticky. It's not going to be like a glaze at all. It's not waxy they just become one with the skin. And they also wear really nicely under other products, which is oftentimes how I use Bionic Glow. The Bionic Bronzer is also amazing, and the texture works so well for this kind of formula because this isn't going to give you like a chiseled bronze. This is more going to warm up the skin overall. So wherever you apply it, it's going to warm up the perimeter of the skin, but because it's not powdery and it's also not full pigment, it just looks like you have a really natural tan or a natural glow. The bronzer itself doesn't have any pearl in it. It just gives you a sort of natural sun-kissed look. And finally, the Bionic blushes are so stunning. I'm wearing the shade uh, Infinity today, which is sort of your classic rose. They also have this really beautiful coral, a cherry red, as well as a berry. And even though these look deep when you squeeze them out, they're almost like a watercolor. So you squeeze them out, I sort of warm it up on the back of my hand, and then I tap it onto my cheek and it shears out. It just gives you the most beautiful, like, popsicle stain kiss across the cheeks. And even the deep shades, can be worn really naturally. Actually, let me swatch these for you because I do think you need to see the blushes to really get a sense of how they wear. So these are the swatches. Sorry, it's not my best swatch work, but this is Infinity, Teleport, Fly, and Beyond. So you can see they start out as, as this, so you can see they really start out as this watercolor, but then they really, really sheer out on the skin. And you can even mix them together to create another shade. And they're just really gorgeous on the skin and they look like real skin. Then let's get into Milk Makeup's stick cheek products. There's contour, bronzer, blush, and highlighter. As you guys know, I've recently reviewed the contour. That's their latest release. And they also sent over all of the shades of all of their cheek products. So I am gonna try to swatch as many of them as I can for you. So I'm sure you guys know by now, this is their classic cream cheek formula. It is truly a middle of the road formula in terms of texture. It's not matte, but it's also not oily and balmy. It's a true natural cream consistency that wears beautifully on the skin throughout the day. It doesn't get patchy, it doesn't ball up, it doesn't stick to spots or anything like that. It always gives you a really even application. Let's talk about their contour, which is their most recent release. And I have to say, this is how you do a contour release. Their contour is called their Sculpt Stick, and it comes in only four shades, but these shades have range. They will work for very, very light to very, very deep skin tones, and you don't often see 
contours be that inclusive of deep skin tones, honestly, in the mainstream market. I use the shade Toasted and it is a true contour in that it has that ashy, cool undertone, but instead of being ashy uh, gray, it almost has an ashy red undertone to it. I don't really know how or why that works, but it gives you ashiness without making you look dead and without making it look actually too gray. So it's a contour shade that's very unique, very interesting, and it actually does work for my skin tone. A lot of times I find that contours can be too gray or deadening on my skin tone because I have golden undertones, but this contour really, really works for me. Okay, I lied. Actually, the lightest shade is called Toasted, and the one that I use today is called Stoked. By the way, word of advice when you're opening a new stick, twist it up before you take the protector off, and then twist the little cap, the protective cap, off of the product so you don't break off the entire top section of your stick. But let me just show you, this contour is so impressive. This is toasted, this is stoked, this is simmer, and this is sizzle. I mean, have you seen a contour that deep on the market? You really don't get that very often. And this shade will work for very, very fair skin tones. So I also really like seeing the like richness of pigment, the depth of pigment. These are really creamy, so you can draw directly onto the cheeks and then blend it out. I like to blend it out with a brush, but they blend out in lots of different ways. And I just have to say, this is a very impressive cream contour lunch. Then we're moving on to the blushes, and these are actually a lip and cheek formula that they just recently expanded. I have shown you all three of the new shades. So there's Smirk, which is a light peachy pink. There's the shade Enigma, which I'm wearing on my cheeks today. It's kind of like a brownie beige rose. And then I'm wearing the shade Muse actually on my lips, and it's a beautiful berry tone. You can see that these, um, for example, this shade, looks deeper in the tube than it is on the face or on the lips because it does sheer out a little bit. And this is a very thin formula, so it's not going to give you like a creamy lipstick sort of feel. It's more of a lip tint, if you will. Because these give you kind of a lip stain, it's also nice for creating sort of a diffused lip look. So I'm going to try to swatch all of these for you. It's going to be a monumental task because I think there are 10 blush shades, but let's do it. So I swatched all the shades. I'm gonna start with this shade at the end and work across. Dash, a light pink. Work, a dusty rose. Perk, coral with shimmer. Flip, a true red. Quirk, spiced rose. Rally, a mauve with shimmer. Quickie, a berry. Swerve, a terracotta. Enigma, a rosy beige. Smirk, a dusty rose with shimmer. And Muse, a deep burgundy. So when they released the Sculpt Stick, they also expanded the Cream Bronzer range, which used to be, I think, two or three shades, and now it's five. So their original shade that I loved is still my best shade, and that is Baked. But I'm gonna swatch all five shades for you. This was the very, very first Cream Bronzer I tried back in the day, like 2015. 16 maybe and I used that thing to death um, until it went bad and I still never finished it but it was a product I really loved really enjoyed it's a classic cream bronzer formula it's not too powdery it's not like matte but it's also not shiny it just gives you a really nice natural skin finish blends out so nicely so here are the swatches again very light to very deep so they added the lightest shade which is dazed and then you've got Baked, Blaze in the middle, Blitzed, and at the end is the shade Spaced. And look how deep and rich that bronzer is. These are definitely true bronzers. They're warm tones, but they're also not gonna make you look orangey. They're not like fake looking bronzers. They have um, a really nice balance of warm and neutral tones. Then we're getting into these stick highlighters and there are three shades. So from lightest to deepest, the first shade is called Turnt and this is sort of a neutral to cool toned pearl. And the middle shade is Lit, that's what I use, and it's got a sort of beigey undertone. The deeper highlight is called Flash and it's got this beautiful warmth and golden pearl running through it. 
So I don't know if Milk Makeup reformulated these because they are smoother and creamier and a little bit more emollient than I remember them being. I do think the lightest shade, um, Turnt, has a bit more micro glitter running through it, or maybe it's just more visible because the base pigment is lighter on my skin. It might look different on a fairer skin tone, but the shade Lit is perfect. It gives me that sort of Charlotte Tilbury flawless filter kind of glow. It's not a heavy pigment. It's not a heavy base pigment. So it doesn't look like there's base color on the cheek. It just looks like it's reflecting back light on my skin tone, which is exactly what you want. I do think there's quite a jump between the middle shade lit and then flash. So it would be nice to see a couple more shades of this in the future, but um, lit is definitely going in my everyday makeup bag. That was a lot of swatching, but that's it for the cheek category. I think it's pretty clear that I like all of their cheek products. I think probably their stick cheek products will work for the most skin types and the most skin tones. But I do still really love the Bionic line. I think it's pretty unique, but definitely the stick products are the crowd pleasers. Moving on to eyes, this is where it becomes a bit of a mixed bag for me. So their one brow product is their Kush Brow Gel. And this is not something I have in my collection at the moment. I actually used to use the tinted Kush Brow Gel all the time. It's a great brow gel for adding a bit of tint and it also adds a bit of volume. There are some fibers in there that do give the illusion of thicker brows. This is not a brow gel that is going to have a lot of hold. Rather, it's going to add some fluffiness and a bit of pigment. It's not something I use very much now because it's just not the type of brow product I'm into at the moment. I do still like a lot of hold in my brow gel. And even though there is a clear version of the Kush brow gel, it's just not quite strong enough in terms of hold for me. For eyeshadow, there's currently only one Milk Makeup eyeshadow product, and that is their Color Chalk. This is a product I have very, very mixed feelings about. So this is their attempt at sort of low waist eye makeup. So it is a sort of stick of chalk that you can use to draw directly on the eyes or apply with a brush or with fingers. And it's wrapped in paper, so much like chalk, you can sort of unwrap the paper as you go down the product. It comes in a lot of really interesting, fun, vibrant shades, as well as neutrals. And it's a very interesting texture. It's dry, but once you warm up the product, it actually can deliver full pigmentation. Some shades are deeper and richer than others, but it can be built up to a pretty impactful saturation. Today I'm wearing the shade Jump, which is a copper all over my lid, and you can see how I applied it. I applied it directly to the eyes. I also used a brush to blend it out, and I also built up pigmentation with my finger. So this is where I run into some problems. One of the problems is that because it is in stick form and it's a slightly drier formula, it works best when you apply it directly to the eyes. But because of the delivery system or the packaging, the actual surface area of the chalk is quite large. And for my eye shape, I don't get a lot of control in terms of where I'm applying. So if I wanna apply across the lash line, I sort of have to hold it at an angle, but it's a little bit clumsy because it's a little bit wider than I would like a stick eyeshadow to be. The other thing is that because it's wrapped in the paper, almost like a crayon, I find that I get a lot of product on my fingers as I'm holding it. And sometimes what happened to me today is that I accidentally brush a finger against my eye without realizing that there's product on it and it smears somewhere where I don't want it to be. What happened to me today was that it got around my under eye on my concealer and I actually had to erase my concealer and reapply it and sort of even it out to fix that mistake. So there isn't a lot of control when it comes to application. The other thing is that I really admire and appreciate the attempt to be more low waste when it comes to makeup, but this color chalk comes in its own little plastic tube so that it doesn't get dirty, it doesn't break down in your makeup bag, it doesn't like get all over your other products. 
So you very much do want to keep the product in its tube. So ultimately it's not that low waste. And if you were gonna use this product anyway, I would prefer it be used in a way that creates a more seamless application process rather than just a container for the product itself. So today I swatched the shades Hula Hoop, which is a really cool lilac silver, and then the shade Jump, the copper that I'm wearing today, the shade Green Light, a beautiful emerald green, and the shade Yo-Yo, which is a rich royal blue. So to me, this is a product that's cool in concept, but it's not flawless in application. And for that reason, I don't reach for it a lot. But if I am going for something really fun or I want a particular pop of color, I would dip into this. It's just not something that um, is worth the hassle for everyday wear, for me anyway. For eyeliners, Milk Makeup um, recently re-released or reformulated their eyeliners, and these are the Infinity Longwear Eyeliners. I'm wearing the brown shade today, and this is a retractable eyeliner. So you get the cap, it comes up, you've got a little sharpener on one side, and this is a very long wearing eyeliner. It's very budge proof, both in the waterline as well as along the lash line. And I do find that this gives you enough time to play and work with the formula. So for example, I used an angled brush to sort of create the wing shape that I wanted but it also sets down and then it does not move all day long. If anything, you do wanna make sure you have a good oil cleanser to get it all off at the end of the day, but I would rather do that than have eyeliner running down my face all day. So when it comes to mascaras, there are two mascaras in the Milk Makeup line. There's the Rise Mascara, which is what I'm wearing today, and this is their latest release that came out last year, and their Kush Mascara that's been around for a while, and they have their regular and waterproof version. There's also a Kush um, Lash Primer that I have not tried, so I can't speak to that. But let's start with Rise. This is a mascara that I did collaborate with Milk Makeup on when they released it last year, and I really, really enjoyed it and it really surprised me. So this is a volumizing mascara. It has this curved bristly wand that when I first saw it, I thought would be too big for my eye shape, but it actually allows you to build and build and build. This is a formula that starts out slightly on the drier side, which I prefer. I don't like a wet mascara formula because it allows you that buildability to kind of sculpt and create the lash that you want. And the great thing about this too is that it does not drop a curl throughout the day. This is not technically waterproof, but it does not smudge on me. And the one con is that because it does start out as a drier formula, it doesn't last as long or the tube dries up a little bit faster. For me, that's a trade-off because I don't like wet mascaras, so I would prefer that, but that is just something to note. The Kush mascaras I don't have with me, they're not my preference. I find that they're a little bit more lengthening, but the formula does not hold a curl for me. So for that reason, it's just not a favorite for me. That's like a must have, especially for my fine straight lashes. But some people do swear by it, so it could just be a preference thing, but I think the Rise Mascara is fantastic. Moving on to lips, there are just a couple of lip products in the Milk Makeup line. They used to have a full pigment lipstick that they don't make anymore, and I do wonder if they're reformulating that. That is something I like about Milk Makeup is they're not afraid to pull a product and sort of experiment and release new SKUs into the range. They're constantly innovating. So the lip lineup right now is simple. The first product is their Electric Glossy Lip Plumper. This comes, I think, in a clear version as well as tinted versions. My favorite shade is called Buzzed and it's a really gorgeous, like my lips but better sort of shade. Now, this is a polarizing product because I love the way it makes my lips look. It sort of fills in the lines. It does make my lips look juicier and smoother and plumper, but it is very much a lip plumper with like menthol in it. Interestingly enough, it doesn't burn the way that um, menthol products traditionally burn. It has this like tingle to it and it does feel like your lips are buzzing a little bit. And so, you know, it gives the illusion of plumper lips by stimulating the blood flow to the lips. And it's just not my favorite kind of product. I find that sensation really uncomfortable and it kind of freaks me out, but I do love this shade. 
Some people like that though, so I just wanna throw that out there. And this also does come in five shades. The other lip formula is their Lip and Cheek Sticks, which I mentioned um, are very sheer. They're more of a stain on the lips. I will say I don't love the shimmer particle shades across the lips. I feel like the shimmer particles become a little bit more visible, whereas the shades with shimmer across the cheek, I don't know if the shimmers like blend away, but they just look a little bit more natural and skin-like. They're just more visible on the lips, I think, because of the texture of the lips. So I tend to go for the non-shimmery shades on my lips. So that's it for makeup. Let's wrap up with skincare. I don't have everything in front of me, but I have tried most of the things. One thing that I've had beside me this whole time is the Milk Makeup Hydro Ungrip Makeup Remover Cleansing Water. This is a micellar water with a pump. It does everything you want micellar water to do. It's what's currently on my vanity to wipe off swatches or to fix my makeup, eyeliner, things like that. It does everything you want a micellar water to do. It breaks down makeup really quickly. It doesn't sting, doesn't burn the eyes. And it's nice, it comes with a pump as well. So it's a good one. Then I've got the Hydro Ungrip Makeup Removing Cleansing Balm. This one is currently unopened or unused yet, but I have used it in the past and it's a really nice, um, just white cleansing balm. It's not super scented. I think if anything, it's like very, very lightly scented, but it breaks down makeup well. It washes away clean. It's a very solid, again, lots of solid products in their skincare lineup. Nothing I feel especially passionate about, but they definitely do what they say they're going to do. There's also the Vegan Milk Moisturizer, which comes in their yellow jar. I don't have it at the moment because I find it a little bit rich for my skin type. The last time I tried it was over the summer, so I might feel a little bit differently in the winter time, but I have friends with dry skin that love it. For example, Gabby really likes it and she uses it um, to prep her own skin or to prep client skin for makeup. And it is pretty nourishing and calming. It's fragrance free, so it's a nice, very like neutral, option. And the last skincare items are their skincare sticks. So there is an oil stick as well as their blue calming um, cooling under eye stick. Those are also not my favorite. I just don't necessarily look for skincare in stick form, but I know people like them to use under makeup, for example, to sort of prime the under eyes or prep the skin for makeup, or people like to travel with them too. It's just not really my preference, but they are still a bestseller, I think, in the Milk Makeup line. I feel like there also used to be other formulas in stick form, but these are the two that exist now and are probably their most popular. Before we wrap up, I do wanna answer a few questions. I threw up a Q&A box in my Instagram stories if anyone had any specific questions about milk makeup. So someone asked, future fluid concealer on oily skin. Yes, I have oily skin. It's a fantastic option and probably the best option in the range for oily skin. It's long lasting, it's skin-like, it's pigmented, but it's not cakey. So it's a really, really good option for oily skin. Another question was comparison against Glossier and like brands. Um, I do think there is a bit of crossover in terms of like the natural skin look, the skin forward makeup. And there are certain products that are in similar categories like skin tints, liquid blushes, like the cloud paint and the bionic blushes. But I do think Milk Makeup overall has more of a range of coverage options and pigmentation options. With Glossier, you're never going to get a makeup look that is impactful. It's always going to be a natural no makeup makeup. Whereas with milk makeup, you have options for no milk <laughs> for no makeup makeup, but you also have options for high coverage and editorial makeup and colorful makeup and more impactful looks. I do think Glossy has expanded their color offerings a little bit more, but still I think Milk Makeup's just a little bit edgier and a little bit more experimental than Glossier, which is still very much about like pretty natural, no makeup makeup. Someone said, do the sticks still smell like Play-Doh, LOL. <laughs> um, I'm smelling it now. It does have a slightly clay-like scent. I don't mind it because it at least is not fragranced and I would rather not have fragrance in my makeup. I do remember the bronzer 
when it expired and I had it years ago when it expired um, it did become very clay like I haven't had any of my current makeup sticks long enough to see if that happens but I think if it starts to smell that strong it's probably a sign of expiration one thing I did want to mention is that I know a lot of people are unhappy that the milk makeup sticks um, are now no longer in their big size and they're $24 now for their small sticks. And I completely understand from a buyer and consumer standpoint that that is frustrating. You're paying the same amount for less product. I do have a sort of counterpoint to that, which is that I have never run out of any of my milk makeup sticks. And I know some people do, and they use their makeup like that, and if you're upset about that, I completely understand. For me, I would actually rather have less product, um, personally, in cream form because cream makeup does expire. I also find the smaller stick shape more effective for targeted application, especially when it comes to contour and bronzer, even blush and highlighter. Um, and especially if you are going to use these for the lips, it doesn't really make sense to have a really big, like deodorant sized cream product that you use on the lips. This is more of like a chubby lipstick size, you know? So again, I'm not defending the decision. I'm not really on either side. Um, I'm just saying that from simply the perspective of expiring products and wasting products, I don't mind having a smaller size. That's just me. Someone asked, what are your top three products? This is tricky. I think I would say the Future Fluid Concealer, the Lip and Cheek Sticks, and then probably one of the primers, depending on the season. I'm cheating here, but in the winter, I would go Hydro Grip. In the summer, I would go Pore Eclipse. But yeah, those are my top three, I think. I would also say the contours, but I don't use contour enough for it to be in my top three, but it is a really good contour. So I'm cheating, but that's my answer. I think I've answered other questions throughout the video. It just got light out, of course. Um, sorry if it's been dark throughout the rest of this video. But if you have any questions, please let me know if you'd like me to do a particular brand for my next brand review. Also let me know in the comments below. And thank you so much for watching. I know this was a long one, but I do hope it was helpful for you and that you'll subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.